Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of I Am Legion for Dying Light 1 and 2. My name is Jason, the creator, and tonight I'm going to be running through the installation for the Dying Light 1 specific mod. So I have released several different versions of this mod. Uh, you can find these on the I Am Legion page, and I've just gone through and updated the page with a lot more information than, that was, than what was available before. Please make sure to check out the page if you have any questions, but I wanted to go really quick through the process of installing the mod and how you can make sure the mod is working with the latest version. So when you go over to the files section you'll notice that there's an installer, there's a manual installer, and then there's the Vortex versions. The Vortex versions are really meant to make things simpler if you're a big fan of Vortex. I'm not a huge fan of the Vortex in, uh, installer so I've actually created my own. That makes it a lot easier that once you set that directory for the first time it sticks inside the system and you never have to point that file path anymore and then in the future I may not have Vortex compatibility based on what I'm able to actually pull off with the mod. So I'll continue to keep you posted on whether or not that will change but for now the mod is Vortex compatible. I just prefer to continue to use the installer so that I have more options here in the future so that we can get these new features out to you guys quickly. All right, let's go ahead and dive through really quick. So for the installer, if you pull the installer offline, here's what you're gonna experience when you open this up. So download it, you're gonna need WinRare 7-Zip, one of the uh, archive tools to open it up. Once you open it, you'll see that the README is included. I've tried to do the same thing that I did for Dying Light 2 here, uh, same file format where you know I'm trying to tell you guys exactly what's changing and then also kind of break down what to expect from the mod itself and then once we get past that part you know you read that if you have any questions I'm going to continue to update that as we go but then once we get to the actual installer we're going to go ahead and unzip that to the desktop here let's go ahead and run that installer and you can see basically the same information I just showed you guys uh, is available inside the installer to keep things simple and clean and then when we hit next uh, actually, I apologize. Let me actually run the uninstaller really quick so that way we can try that again. So this is actually, if you've already installed the mod using the installer, this is what you should see next. It'll go straight into the features. You don't have to worry about setting the location, but I want for the purpose of this guide to go ahead and run this uninstaller just so that way we can make sure to cover how to set that install path. So let's try that again. So if we hit next and we've uninstalled the mod or we've never installed the mod, you should have this C dying light file root. This is not the right location. So let me go ahead and explain. I wanted to try to create a way of letting you know, hey, this needs to point towards the dying light install folder uh, without actually accessing your system files or doing anything with your registry. I want to try to keep this installer as useful as possible without making it as sketchy as possible. And so the idea here is that we're going to use Steam uh, to go ahead and get the location here. So let me go ahead and open up my Steam and here we're going to go to our Dying Light game, right click, go to manage and say browse local files, opened up here in the background. And this is my root folder. So this is the information that I want to go ahead and copy into the installer. You can either copy it in or you can actually just browse to this location by using the browse button. Either way, just make sure that you're pointing at the Dying Light folder and then hit next. When you do so, it's going to say that, the, that it already exists. That's normal. Go ahead and hit yes. And then from here, we've got a couple of different options. So I've went ahead and included a good difficulty breakdown on the Nexus page, but let me go ahead and summarize that for you guys right now. So I am working on four versions of the mod for Dying Light 1. That will include Casual Survivor, Survivor, Ultimate Survivor, and Insanity Mod. Uh, mode, sorry. So the idea here is that casual survivor is not out yet. Currently only survivor is available. That basically makes the entire world more aware of your presence, sound and noise, uh, and then activity outside of the safe zones will be uh, relayed over to the zombies locations and more of them are likely to overwhelm you. I've also increased the density of the entire map and so more zombies are gonna spawn across the world at the start. The difference between that is, is that normally you have spawn increases, which increases the number of uh, zombies that spawn over time, and then you have density increases. 
Right now we have density increases, which will overall increase the number of zombies that are spawned across the map at the start, which means it is much easier for you to get overwhelmed as you play through. This will also include the changes to the human AI and also some of the upcoming things that I'll be doing with the inventory system and many different other systems across the game. I am planning on bringing most of Dying Light 2's update and version of the mod into Dying Light 1 if possible. Ultimate Survivor is a mix, it goes back to my original version, except Insanity is now kind of that original version. Ultimate Survivor and Insanity are really the same thing, but there's a little key difference here where Ultimate Survivor is a blend between runners and walkers. This gives you an opportunity to have some of the map actually walking towards you, and then the rest of the map is rapidly running towards your location. They can also climb and move across those buildings. While the insanity mode is, they're all runners. They're all runners, they're all heading for you, and they're, they know where you are and they're searching for you at all times. It also changes a few things like insanity mode, they can detect you a little bit easier from further distances. Their uh, sound, the sound actually emanates further, that kind of thing, to try to bring the map down on you more. So if you're looking for a good blend that's above Survivor, Ultimate Survivor is right for you. If you're just looking for chaos, Insanity is the way to go. And I currently have a YouTube series that's going on right now called Let's Play Dying Light 1 or I Am Legion uh, Insanity Mode. And so if you want to check out what that looks like, please check out the YouTube channel to find out more. I'll make sure to link these those videos here on this, uh, on this video as well. There's currently two optionals uh, available right now through the installer. You have a data four, which originally, just to clarify on the first version of this, it was to do the increase to the density around the map. I've flipped that to where now more features are included in the base uh, game. And so more information and more core uh, features have now been included in the mod. And so now if you wanna reduce some of those features, if you wanna lessen the number of zombies on the map, all you have to do is install this optional, it'll create a data three, or data four rather, and then you don't have to worry about there being so many zombies. And believe it or not, that can make a huge difference when it comes to ultimate survivor and insanity. If you lessen the amount of zombies, you might stand a better chance. Additionally, I've also included the reshade for the mod as well. So I have gone through and created a custom reshade. I did not include the uh, ray tracing aspects uh, of the reshade, but that information is available. Please reach out to me on the Discord channel if you're interested in my uh, ray tracing uh, profile as well. It makes a big difference inside of the game and I'm super thrilled to get back into the game with that level of graphics. So. Let's go ahead and move forward. Let's go ahead and do insanity mode. We'll go ahead and hit next. And then it's gonna ask us some basic questions here, which by the way, you don't have to create a start menu option. Uh, you can check that button, button at the bottom there and we'll go ahead and hit next. And when it's done, it's gonna put two things on your desktop. So where this is currently pointing these files and just so you're aware for all modding purposes, this DW folder, this first one, is the location where all these modifications are going. So it just installed this data three into this location. So I now have the latest and greatest version of the mod installed. Well, if I wanna access this panel a little bit faster, if you've already opened it because you were using the Steam method, that's great. If you didn't, I also included some uh, additional shortcuts here when you install the mod. So it will give you an install path as well. So if you go ahead and run that, it will open this up. Inside this location down here at the bottom is the actual uninstaller. That is the uninstaller for the mod. I currently don't have that name properly. I apologize, so it's gonna show up as that uninstaller 000.dat. And so that will get mixed into those files a little bit. I apologize for that, but that is the uninstaller for the mod. So if you run that, it will remove the mod completely and you don't have to worry about the mod anymore. So from here, you can also run the uninstaller from the desktop as well if you want to quickly uh, remove the mod. And if you just want to delete those, you can also just remove those from your desktop. You don't need them. 
If for any reason you want to change the difficulty of the mod at any time, all you have to do is just run this installer again. Once you run the installer and hit next, it will skip that option of asking you where you want to point the mod unless you've uninstalled it. And at this point, you can select any other mod that you or any other mod difficulty that you want. So say we installed Insanity a bit too much. We want to drop it down to Ultimate Survivor. We hit next. It will let you know you chose Insanity last time. Are you sure? And you can go ahead and hit yes, and it will tell you about that change that it's going to make. And so now we've installed Ultimate Survivor into our game. So this is an easy way. And one of the reasons I like the installer is that you can very quickly go between those three difficulties without much hassle once you've installed for the first time. So really installing for that first time is the biggest hassle. And then after that, it should be smooth sailing. So let's dive into the uh, mod config next. So if for anybody else that is done at this point, you've heard enough, uh, I would highly recommend checking out the mod config. So for Dying Light 2, this has been a big impact with the community of being able to balance the game and get these features into the game so that you can very quickly modify the features that you want to balance the game how you want it to be balanced. It also makes a big impact when you don't have to go searching for a ton of other mods on the on the Nexus mods as well, because over time, some of those mods become outdated. They're not working properly. While I am Legion will always try to support the latest and greatest version of the, of the game. So therefore any changes that you get inside that mod config should work and will be updated as we go. So let's go ahead and go into our data three. So the data three dot pack is what will, uh, will actually be the mods main, uh, data file, I apologize. Uh, the data four, data five in the future will be the optional. So for now it's gonna be data three always. So let's go ahead and open that up. Again, I'm using WinRare, uh, makes it a lot easier if you're using WinRare. If you wanna use seven zip, whatever it is, for some people, I will go ahead and mention if the, so right now it's showing all these as archives. I can very easily just double click them. That's not a default on Windows, obviously. Some of you may know that. If you right click these files, any of these files, you can go to open with. And if you've pointed your archiver tool, you may have to say open down at the bottom. You may have to say browse for other apps on your PC. But if you found that uh, archiver and you have it set, you can go in here and say set to always. And then from then on out, it will open these files automatically. That's true of any file format. You know, that's nothing special. You can do that with any file, but I found for getting inside these uh, mods and it's so much faster. So I would highly recommend it. So inside this file, this is going to be the important file that if you ever join the discord and you have questions or, you know, where do I need to go to change this? What do I need to do to remove this feature? This is where I'm going to have you go. So inside this data theory is the location of really the meat and potatoes of all of the mod and how the mod works inside the game. So if you ever want to go in there, for example, you don't like the way it turns off, you know, the ability to walk around while you're on your cell phone, you're doing your radio call into the uh, GRE. If you don't like that, you want to restrict that motion down. And I tell you, oh, hey, you need to open your data three and delete the quest folder. This is a good example of here's your quest folder. And instead of having to go inside this, you could just delete it outright. So you just select the file, press delete on your keyboard. It will repack that archive and it's now removed that feature from the game. So I'll probably tell you very specific instructions of like, hey, go under scripts, go under inventory, delete this one file. And that's the steps you need to take in order to remove that one feature out of the mod. So let's go ahead and dive into the mod config really quick. So the A I A L underscore settings dot M T H is the settings file is the config file for this mod. It's where you can find everything for the mod and setting up that balancing. So let's go ahead and drag that out to the desktop. And I use notepad plus plus. So let's go ahead and open that up and you can see here that it looks like I did forget to update the naming at the top there. I do apologize that will be updated here in the future. I haven't gone through and fully balanced for all three mods yet into the uh, into this actual config. So that's why that hasn't been updated. So currently all versions of the mod, all three difficulties use the same settings. So if here in the future, I'll be continuing to do balancing and we'll figure out what the best balance is for the mod. 
So let's go ahead and go to the summary. So basically I try to summarize at the top here what core features are available in this mod. I think some of those are gonna change as well. So I think those are also from Dying Light 2. So I do, I, again, I do apologize for the outdated documentation here. But as you scroll down, you'll see the different sections. I try to base them on, you know, kind of header uh, information. The reason that this is not very human readable is because it can't, because it's actually a config file that's getting pulled into the game files. So because of that, a lot of this has to kind of keep this balance. It's not as clean as I would like it, but I am continuing to try to refine and clean these up as we go. So as you go through each one of these, there should be a location for each one. So if you're curious where these files are actually being used, just follow the path that's listed at the top. And as you go through here, I try to list out what the defaults are and then what the current value is. So say for the example, if we wanna go in here and make a change, we determine under health, well, hang on, I want the region of health uh, to regenerate faster. We need to read the little description here. So it says multiplier of the time needed to regenerate the player's health from critical health. So this is the time needed before it will start to regen. Um, currently, the way this reads, uh, it kind of goes flipped, which is interesting. I would actually, I would also kind of assume this would be the reverse, easy, and they would increase time uh, for the higher difficulties. I may have to double check that and see if I've scaled the wrong way. So potentially, I've actually gone the wrong way here. I did notice that Nightmare difficulty does heal pretty quick. So I'm actually going to have to go in there and just double check this. But the idea is, is that as you're going through each one of these, please read the little note at the top if there is one and try to identify, okay, these are the defaults. This is the setting that I want. So say I want everybody to be able to uh, shorten that amount of time that it takes to heal. I can go in here and set each one of these to 1.0 and hit save. And so across any difficulty, they'll all do the exact same thing with the healing. Sometimes that's good if you want to launch the game and kind of feel uh, which difficulty in game, not the mod difficulty, but the actual in game difficulty is right for you. So I've updated uh, this config recently. So uh, with this latest update, there's this new one that's called Enemy Health. Let me explain that one really quick because that is one of the newer ones if you haven't had a chance to look through the config. Basically, I've made this to where you now have a multiplier for the health of every enemy inside the game. I mean, I pretty much covered every single enemy inside the game outside of a few major bosses and a couple of very key characters where they've done very specific quests based modifications but you should be able to go in here and say for example you want all the infected you want all the zombies in the map to be super squishy you know you want them uh, as soon as you hit them you know you knock their heads off that's fine you can just go in here and set this to 0 0.5 0 0.3 0 0.2 you know whatever you're feeling Please be aware that some of them do break down into other classes such as infected heavy. So maybe someone has armor or he's got gear on, you know, I've tried to make these as realistic as possible and have some aspects that make them more interesting. So as you go across, each one isn't given a blank, you know, single modifier. Each one is given its own unique modifier. So just pay attention to what each one says, and I haven't gone through and added a ton of notes here. This is still very much ongoing, so I appreciate any feedback that you have here. Please just try to bear with me, and, be, and please just join the Discord community if you have any specific questions. I'm sure I'd answer them very quickly if you ask on the Discord. Uh, in addition, you have things like airdrops and guns. Uh, another big one that I know comes up is the damage. Uh, so that is on here as well. There is a damage modifier section and inside of there is the overall damage to the player. So if you're struggling and you know you don't like the way that the damage is being done in the game currently, I currently like the level of difficulty, which is get off the ground, get high, jump, run, don't stop. If you stop, you can get overwhelmed. Uh, you know, I like that kind of gameplay. Not everybody does. So if you want to make your, your player, you know, more of a sponge and you don't want to get hit so hard, then you can go through here and just set up some of these damage to player, just increase those, um, so that they're able to, or decrease in this case, so that it's able to do less. And, uh, please let me know with each one of these, please just let me know how that works. 
Uh, I did go through and add global weapon modifiers as well. So you can, you can go on there and increase the damage done by your weapons as well, uh, along with several other settings inside the game. So I'm still going through each one of these. Some of these are where I've lifted it from Dying Light 2. And the reason that I've left a lot of these is because I'm trying to actually bring a lot of these settings into the game. So if I just delete them outright, then they won't be good reminders. So I am trying to still go feature by feature and bring these uh, different features into the Dying Light 1 that were in Dying Light 2, but it's taking a little bit of time. So please bear with me. More updates coming soon. Super excited to get these new updates to you guys and show you guys kind of the ideas and hopes for Dying Light 1 now that we're back and rolling. Uh, so let me show you. So we've, we've saved a couple of modifiers here. We've changed the health for the player. So all I need to do is, is we'll go ahead and minimize this out. And what I'm gonna do is drag that uh, I Am Legion settings back into the file here, back into the zip. I would highly recommend extracting that file before you modify it and then placing it, re-import it back into the archive. Rather than modifying it in the archive, you can do this, but I wouldn't recommend it just because so many people have reported that it's had issues because it's using this temp system inside your inside your computer. Uh, a lot of times this doesn't work properly. So, you know, complete, please continue to bear with me. As soon as I discover a better way to inject this config into the game that doesn't have to go inside this data pack, I'll do that. Um, but I haven't found a better way to do it yet. So please bear with me. All right, guys, I think that pretty much covers most of the settings here, most of the ways to install the game. If you have any questions, make sure to throw them on the uh, either here on YouTube or on the Discord. I'm looking for feedback. Happy to be back inside Dying Light 1. Super excited to get you guys back into Dying Light 1. Please let me know what you're experiencing, and uh, happy gaming, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.